blessing. You know, it's, it's one thing for him to say, we're not going to tolerate bishops who cover up abuse. But what happened? Bishop Finn, who was convicted of endangering children and in Kansas City, and he couldn't even teach CCD in his own diocese, but yet for two years he remained the bishop. And when he did resign, it was quietly. No one said he resigned because he endangered children. He got to keep his title, his honors, so that doesn't act as a deterrent to any other bishop. You know, you abuse, it's okay. You can go ahead and keep your honors and so forth. And, and you know, what kind of answer is that for protecting children? The f Archbishop during the last grand jury investigation, and there have been two here in Philadelphia, uh, Justin Regali, when, he, when the grand jury uh, report was handed down, I believe there were 37 predators still in ministry. And through the grand jury and the trials of Monsignor Lynn, who was convicted of moving, knowingly moving child predators and endangering children, and he is in prison for that part he played. But Cardinal Bergali quietly resigned. He's living a life uh, completely, he hasn't lost his title, hasn't lost his paycheck. And this weekend, we've noticed him in the front pew here at all the festivities. He's being honored, and yet he left in disgrace. So to us, the message is, if you protect the predators, if you keep the church a secret, if you keep the lid on the scandal, you'll be rewarded, not you'll be held accountable. So how do you take the Pope's words of children are important, the families are everything, and then square that with well, if you protect the predators who are raping the kids, it's okay. So these two brave women followed the Pope around from three cities trying to get his attention, trying to get him to address the issue of sexual abuse. You can see them there, uh, Becky Ioni and Barbara Doris. Now these ladies are very brave and they are wanting the Pope to actually do something about this. They're saying literally countless kids are now vulnerable to abuse by clerics today. We need to lift these statute of limitation laws that are allowing this to go on. Stop protecting people and putting them in a VIP section during your visit. Now we're gonna conclude the rest of this hard hitting interview right after a quick break. I might as well just. approval for Hillary Clinton. Get your Hillary for Prison 2016 t-shirt today at the InfoWars store. Hurry up because these things are selling out faster than Hillary Clinton. This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Introducing Secret 12, the new InfoWars Life Vitamin B12 formulation. Now, InfoWarsLife.com is excited to announce that we can bring you our most bioactive, powerful form of B12 that has been developed with our exclusive perfected process. Secret 12 is a binary of nutramedical grade, bioavailable coenzyme forms of B12. Secure your revolutionary Secret 12 formula right now at InfoWarsLife.com or call 888-253-3139. I'm running for president. Everyday Americans need a champion, and I want to be that champion. I'm hitting the road to earn your vote, and I hope you'll join me on this journey. Alex Jones here to tell you about how you can help spread liberty worldwide while also enjoying what I have found to be the best tasting 100% organic coffee on the planet. For more than a decade, my favorite coffee has come from the high mountains of southern Mexico, where the Chiapas farmers grow their unique shade-grown Arabica beans. We have now managed to secure the sought-after beans in a highly customized blend. Discover and try a bag of the Patriot Blend 100% organic coffee at InfoWarsLife.com. This coffee gives 
gives you a long, smooth pick-me-up for hours without the headaches and heartburn that so many other coffees give me personally. Hands down, this is my favorite coffee. And it's taken us years to secure connections directly to the Chiapas Mexican farmers. Drop by the site today, order a bag or two, and I don't think you're going to be disappointed. Available in original or with our immune support infusion blend, you will be supporting a free press, all the while enjoying a truly great tasting cup of my favorite coffee. Available at InfoWarsLife.com. Another major health threat, this one in Toledo, Ohio, where everybody in the entire city has been told not to drink the water. Ohio's governor declaring a state of emergency. Did you know that the average person uses about 80 to 100 gallons of water at home every single day? If there's a water emergency, will you be prepared? Panicked residents forming long lines throughout the day. We're here at a supermarket in Toledo. You can see the shelves empty where water once was. To stay safe and healthy during a crisis, you must must have access to safe, clean water. Water which will not be available at your local grocery store. There's a mad dash on right now to stock up on supplies. The ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system is a must have for every modern, independently minded household. Protect your family's safety during an emergency. Go to InfoWarsStore.com today to purchase your ProPure Pro 1 G2.0 water filtration system or call 1-88-253-3139. Something is wrong. We're getting one message here, but we're getting actions over here that don't go along with the message. The Catholic Church admits there's over 60, about 6,500 credibly accused priests in the United States alone. Um, we did some math, and the Catholic Church also in 2012 said they believed there were about 100,000 clergy abuse victims in the United States. And if you do the math of the United States is 6% of the world's population, that would give you 1.5 million clergy abuse victims in the world. And we feel that's a very under-reported number. As far as taking action against any bishop, and he hasn't taken action against any bishop. There's been bishops that have resigned, but they haven't been forced to resign. They haven't been publicly demoted. And so, you know, what does that say to the victims uh, that were under that bishop? You don't matter. And what does that say? You know, as a victim, the thing that we need most to heal is to know that another child won't go through what we went through. And so we need the bishop. We need a courageous bishop. You know, in one of his statements, he said, I'm not going to tell you what to do. But we need a bishop. I mean, we need a pope who's going to tell the bishops what to do. We need a pope who's going to tell the bishops, you have to post on your websites the names of every priest that's been credibly accused. You have to work towards child safety laws instead of lobbying against them. You have to turn over all records to secular authorities instead of fighting those. Those would make bishops courageous, but we haven't seen that happen. This is what we're saying to the Pope. You should be telling these bishops, you get out from behind that desk, you find those secret archives and you turn them over to the police. It hasn't happened yet. Because, you know, the Pope's not taking action, one thing we want to have happen is we'd like the federal government to take action. We'd like them to investigate these crimes. We've seen that happen in Australia, in Belgium, in Ireland, Canada. in Canada. And so we'd like to see the federal government investigate these crimes and, and, and you know, make the, the Pope release these documents like everyone else has done. This is not a problem of the past. You should not believe your children are safe. It is important to be vigilant, to, to be very careful, to watch for signs of grooming. We say to Catholics, please donate elsewhere until the Pope actually takes actions that make kids safer today than they were before. Grooming is what uh, a predator often does, not only with a child, but with the family. He uh, ingratiates himself, and, and you have to remember that Child predators aren't the dirty old men hiding in the bushes. Child predators are charming, they're charismatic, they do many, many good things, and they help many kids. But that doesn't mean they're not raping other children. So you can't paint a predator as black or white. And you have to be careful. Grooming is when he tr the parents begin to trust him. Oh, he drove Johnny to soccer practice and everything was fine. He took Mary, Mary went and helped him clean the church, everything was fine. And this can, can go on for a period of a year or more, or longer, while they gain the trust. So the parents say, yeah, you know, Mary's been going with him or Johnny's been going with him for years and all is fine. But 
it isn't all fine and you need to talk to your children. You need to ask them those questions time and time again. Has anyone ever hurt you? And the message should be, I will help you. I will believe you. There is help. You're not alone. And you have to keep talking to your children and to anybody who has been harmed. I'd say, please, please tell someone, tell a, th a therapist, tell a good friend, call a support group like SNAP. You're not alone. Help's available. And as bad as it is now, it will get better. Please, please don't carry the secret alone. 50% of our members are female. Oh, while I think maybe the press, it's, it seems more to, maybe it seems ho more horrible that when a, a boy is abused, but just as many girls are abused. And one thing I wanted to add to what Barbara said about um, protecting your children, you know, a, easy, a good way to do that is when there's an article about sex abuse, talk to your child about it. Bring it up, say, well, I'm really glad that victim came forward. That was a smart thing to do. It's really hard for kids to come forward, so we want to create a safe environment where they know it's okay to come forward and that this is a subject that that is okay to talk about. I often think if I had a goal with sex abuse, it would be that, that it would become so common, like, you know, when a little child um, scrapes their knee, they run home to mom and they say, look, I scraped my knee, and the mom takes care of it. If someone's sexually abused, I want that child to say, I can go home to mom or dad, and I can tell them, because they'll take care of it. But when it's such a taboo and nobody talks about it, it's hard for that child because they think, I can't tell, because this is a subject we don't talk about. So the more we talk about, the more we educate parents, the more we educate the public, and educating our kids, the better off they'll be and the safer they'll be. I think the number is less than 2% of pedophiles are convicted. And uh, it's because of the statute of limitations. Yeah. And the government's research says anyone who's sexually abused as a child doesn't come forward till they're in their mid to late 40s. So for most, in most states, then they are beyond the statute of limitations and the predator is free to go on and abuse again. The Department of Justice needs to put in incentives out there for states to change the statute of limitation, or better yet, abolish it. Yeah. So that, you know, you can't hide behind the statute of limitations. And the church is certainly hid behind the statute of limitations. Uh, when reforms have come up, and right now there's a bill before the New York legislature, Pennsylvania, and Washington, D.C., all the places the Pope has been, and the only opposition they're facing is the Catholic Church. So the Pope could say, bishops, you may not oppose these law reforms that will make it easier for victims to come forward. And not only that, you should be fighting for them, not against them. When we changed the statute of limitations in Virginia and we were testifying, the only person that came and showed up was the chancellor of the diocese speaking out against changing it. He did some research and he decided that the average um, statute of limitations was seven years past the age of majority. So he was okay with that. And he said, you know, that that's what they would be okay if Virginia changed that. I believe in one of the um, interviews, they asked, um, was it Coyne? Bishop Coyne? I think so. Or Kurt, I can't remember. I, I think it was Bishop Coyne. They asked him something about, well, why are you fighting the statute of limitations? And he said something to the effect, because I need to protect my priest. And I'm not sure what that means. I mean, protect them from what? Isn't it the children we should protect? And they often talk about, well, we don't want to change the statute of limitations because memories are faded and, and this and so forth. But, you know, when you change the statute of limitations, you don't change the burden of proof. You still have to prove that someone's guilty. And, and don't victims deserve a chance at justice? Uh, in many states, the registry, the national, or the registries of the sex offenders are not funded. So in other words, if I am convicted and I have to go and register, I say I live at X place and I work at X place. No one checks. It's, they have no funding for it. So it's sort of, it gives a false sense of security. Uh, again, if, you, if they do by some chance figure out you're not where they say you are, all they do is mark you as non-compliant. So it isn't the protection you think it is. Uh, and we, th we feel that reforming the statute of limitations and allowing these crimes to be prosecuted or creating a civil window where the civil cases go forward based on merit as opposed to being time barred are far more effective tools 
to protecting children than the, the sexual registries are. And if they can't be convicted because of statute of limitations,